Hello and welcome. On this week's edition of Eyewitness Report, our eyes are set on the Ajiro community in Etiosa, local government area of Lagos State, where residents lament the lack of infrastructure. We follow an eyewitness lead for details of two building collapse in Onisha, the commercial hub of Anambra State. Plus, an unscheduled visit by the Anambra State Governor to ongoing projects results in the sacking of contractor handling a major road construction in Ogbaru local government area of the state. This and more shortly. I am Jomi Otaigwe. We begin from Anambra State, southeast Nigeria, precisely in Onisha, where incidents of collapsed structures have been making headlines. This report highlights the collapse of two-story buildings within two weeks. An eyewitness picture of a recent collapse of five-story building under construction in Fege, Onisha. No life was lost in this incident. Another eyewitness video captures the pandemonium that sets in shortly after the collapse of a two-story building under construction in Ochanja Market, Onitsha, about two weeks ago. The collapse left at least five people dead with 25 injured. The incident is followed by the visit of building experts to the site for on-the-spot assessment. This is not a, a complete NMM, it's on the site NMM. They use it in on beam and as such. It cannot hold. It cannot hold. The preliminary information we can see on the ground is that we noticed that there was a poorly shadow mixture and there was a poor foundation layer. Uh, our team are here. We are going to pick information and samples and then go back to the lab and come out with the forensic analysis of what actually transpired here. That's what we're going to do. The material lab is here, and I'm rusty material testing laboratory, uh, picking information. We're working collab uh, in collaborations with Anambra State Material Lab and Fiscal Planning Board. So we'll come back again to give you proper analysis. But we we'll thank God so far that uh, you can see we're excavating. Maybe before the dawn, we'll see whether we can discover more dead bodies. But this is highly condemnable. The engineering infrastructure here is, is nothing to write home about. There was a poor mixture of concrete, there was a substandard materials of roads used, and I don't think that is even a, a proper supervision. approvals and permits are given is to make sure that we secure the lives of the Anambra. We want to use this opportunity again to reiterate our earlier warning. Please, before you start any building, come to the fiscal planning board and get an approval before you build, not when you have started. It's very important. If you do, we will be able to find out if there are issues of structural integrity and so on and so forth. So that's a warning, and Mr. Governor has said he will not take it lightly anymore. Even the building that is standing, because uh, we are not sure of the structural integrity, he has directed that it should be brought down. My advice is for government to activate 
total inspection of building projects from foundation. That's why we have Korean. In Korean, all the professionals are there. Iron bender, electricians, this and that, bricklayers, engineers of all nature is there. If we incorporate them into supervision of every building in, in the state, in the federation, they have units in every state in the country to prevent occurrence of house collapse which is a very big loss, both the developer and loss of lives that is attached to it. So it can be prevented, it is just to inspect from beginning. The Anambra State Governor, Professor Chukuma Soludo, also visits the area. He condemns the impunity of some developers and announced the demolition of every structure without his approval. I hear there are some people building stuff at Osei Market, some people building stuff at Mem Market, at Obogu, at Niger, Niger Street, here in Ochanja, here in Ochanja, it's not just this one. I hear of some other similar illegal structures going on. We are going to bring all of them down. We will bring all of them down. The chairman of Ochanja. Where is the chairman of Ochanja? Because I've gotten reports about some shops being erected around Ochanja. Yes. No, 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 no. We are coming. We are coming. And when we come, we'll hold you personally responsible. Any shop, any shop, and that I don't have my signature on it, we will personally arrest you and prosecute you. Anybody who does builds any shop, any shop that doesn't have my signature on it in Anambra State now in any market, we will arrest this person and prosecute you and put you to jail. Because otherwise, you are putting the lives of people in jeopardy. If you want to be chairman of a market, you better be up to your responsibility. If you don't want, you resign. We get somebody else to be the chairman. But if it is to be chairman, is to go on building all these illegal structures all over, it will come to a stop. And it has come to a stop in Anambra State. This will not happen again. And then, furthermore, we are going to be doing integrity tests. Integrity tests on various buildings in our markets and public places in Anambra. And anyone that fails that test, we're going to bring that building down. We cannot afford to waste one life. We cannot afford to waste one life because of the greed of a few. We can. This is tragic. My heart bleeds. But I hear five persons already confirmed dead. May their souls rest in peace. Well, five already confirmed, the others are in hospital. But, and I'm praying, we're deploying everything, everything that we can get. I hear this has come. Some others, excavators are also on their way. Let us do the first job. The first job is such a rescue. By the time we finish, then we get down to it. We are going to have a panel of inquiry into this, an inquiry to investigate this, and everybody who is culpable will be answerable to it. That's the way we must go, because Anambra, there must be law and order.
still in Anambra State, the termination of Okwoko Road construction in Ogbaru local government area of the state and the sacking of the contractor over negligence and delay in delivering the project might be a strong indication that the Anambra State government is not taking it lightly with contractors handling projects across the state. Anambra State Governor Professor Chiku Masoludo acknowledges chairs from a crowd of residents as he leads some members of his cabinet to an unannounced inspection of road project in Okoko, Ogbaru local government area. Nobody drops anything. angered by the state of things, Governor Saludo confronts the contractor handling the project, totaling 14.5 kilometers network of roads. September 10 to February 10 this year. Yeah, from September 10 to June 10 was nine, nine months. So this project ought to have ended by June 10 last year. This is the ninth month after it was supposed to have ended. So double the period when you are supposed to have delivered this period, this prior project. It becomes very, very evident that your company is totally incompetent and irresponsible. Totally, totally incompetent and irresponsible. After we paid you 50% mobilization, there's no place else in the country that pays 50% mobilization. Never other places that even pays 15% mobilization. We paid you 50% mobilization. 2022. And this project was supposed to be delivered June last year. Nine months after, you haven't delivered. You are still at 40 something percent. Today and here, I terminate this contract. Here, today, this contract is over. We are going to calculate what you are going to refund back to the state government. You can move your things out here. From tomorrow, I'm looking for somebody else to start this project. So you can remove your stuff from here going forward. The governor also inspects the fruit and vegetable market. Addressing the people in the local dialect, Professor Soludo condemns their attitude to the sanitation of the area as well as the practice of street trading. He, however, announces the construction of a modern fruit and vegetable market to relocate street vendors. Governor Soludo also tasks the leadership of the markets union on internal security arrangements, just as he assures them of the government's commitment to the overall peace and safety of their community. Let me remind you that the program enables you to participate in telling stories that affect your community. With your mobile device, you can capture activities around you and upload them on our eyewitness portal on the Channels TV app. As soon as we get them, we begin the process of following up to report news that may compel relevant authorities to attend to your community needs. Now let's look at some of the pictures and videos we received in the past week. We begin this segment of the program with this video of residents of Hopeville Estate moving their belongings out of their homes. Some men believed to be members of the tax force from the Lagos Building Control Agency invaded the community in Etiosa local government area of Lagos State to demolish houses and other structures. The eyewitness reporter did not give reasons for the action by the tax force. A motorist driving through the rehabilitated section of the Third Milan Bridge in Lagos appreciates the new look of the road infrastructure in the next video. 
The third Milan Bridge, which has been undergoing maintenance for weeks, is the longest of three bridges connecting Lagos Island to the mainland. The segment concludes with a video of residents and road users protesting the deplorable state of Agura, Berigbe Road in Ikorodu. They are appealing to the Lagos state and federal government to fix the road. Welcome back. The absence of basic infrastructure and amenities are considered as some of the reasons for developmental setbacks in our general community in the Etiosa local government area of Lagos State. This has led to several peaceful demonstrations from residents aimed at drawing the attention of the state government to their plight. When you visit Lagos, Nigeria's financial capital, Areas such as Victoria Island, Banana Island, Ikoi, and Leki take the center stage for luxury and class. And yet, communities such as Ajiro, located in a Tiosa local government area of the state, exist, looking moderately developed on the outside, but plagued by a number of issues. During the rainy season, heavy downpours render the community susceptible to flooding. And yet, the story is no different in some areas as we visit in the dry season. The drains are clogged, blocked and filthy. We make a stop at Ajiro Community Primary School. The structures have been renovated, but the children are compelled to play in a bushy environment. And when the day is over, the children play by taking the long walk back to the community, which is about a 30 minute walk from the school. Our next stop is the Ajiro Health Center. For starters, the center is situated within the premises of the Ajiro Central Mosque. The facility also looks absolutely deserted and unkempt. With sources telling me power is a major problem. We are also told that this gen set meant for the center has allegedly not been powered in eight years. The situation is the bedrock for this town hall meeting which organizers say is to brainstorm on these issues with fingers pointing at the traditional ruler. The primary agenda is to once again call the attention of the government and um, the people in power for the happenings and the things that is happening in our general community. We have said this, we have granted a lot of press conference, we've done a lot of interviews that our king, Obati Jana Retujakiloi, and his ally, Alaji Yekinolala Bakari, the Badugan of Ajiro land. The both of them are the ones 
in the responsibility of selling all lands that is more than 5,000 plots of land in Ajio community in the Trust and local government. All this land that has been sold since 1993 up to now, the, the developmental stride is not reflecting in the community. Efforts to get a response from the monarch was met with a wall of resistance as the secretary of the palace says the king declined comments. And for a reaction from the government, we decide to check in with the Lagos State Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Mr. Benga Omotosho. Government has done a few things there. Like you have said, the, 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 the school, which you say is a bit far from the community, uh, the health center, which you say is a bit far from the community and that it looks uh, a bit uh, uh, irregular. But let, 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 let me tell you, the main problem that I see about that community is that uh, there seems to be no unity. All of the time, the kind of news coming out of uh, that community doesn't make the government happy at all. They quarrel among themselves over the sale of land. People asking the community leaders to come and account for uh, the proceeds of uh, land sales. The young people in the community uh, making accusations against uh, their elders and the elders uh, fighting back. So most of the time, you get to hear news about that place. It's about... Uh, you know, putting out a fire instead of uh, talking about uh, community development. You can see, you said the road is motorable. When we were building the road, we had a very good uh, drainage. But today, you go there, part of the drains are blocked. And that costs uh, government money to remove them. So I will suggest that um, the people of Arjuna should look inwards, love one another and that uh, they should work together as a team to see how the town can make progress, the community can make progress instead of fighting over uh, the June things, things that are not really uh, very, very important, that are not of uh, the interest of uh, the majority. So we will go and look into the problems that you are talking about, the drains, we will get them cleared, and then the, 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 the uh, uh, community uh, health center that we have spoken about, we will also get a minister of health to go and look at it if there is something that we need to do there. I mean, if the community provides land, government can build another school in the community. Because the government has uh, done a lot of uh, things in education, over 1,400 uh, uh, so projects in education. And most of these projects are in the areas where people never thought the government would go and have a presence in all those uh, communities. So it's not going to be out of place if they are asking for another school, which I think the government can consider. So I, I, I feel that uh, the people of this particular community, what they need to do is to first be united among themselves and you know, have a common voice and raise a common force for them to be able to do whatever they need to do for the betterment of their community, for the upliftment of their community, not just to just stand there and begin to grumble about government not this, government not doing that. The little that the government has done, if you can call it little, the government's modest achievement in their community, what is it that they have done with it? Like you have spoken about a blocked drains. That is not something that is good. We have a very good uh, community development association uh, structure in Lagos and so vibrant are these uh, community development associations that whatever they feel any community is lacking, they ensure that the government gets to know about such lack and government works with them to be able to resolve that. So the community development association that is in that part of uh, the state in Ajiro, I will also encourage them to work with the Ministry of Local Government and Community Affairs so that all of the things that they are complaining about, there are issues that are resolvable. In 2020, some indigenous people of Ajiro community under the aegis of concerned Ajiro indigents protested against the alleged high-handedness and lack of transparency in the management of the community by their traditional ruler. The residents continue to express hope that the demands and grievances will be met someday.
that's how far we can go on this week's edition of the program. We do hope to see you again same time next week. I'm Yomi Otaigwe. Bye for now. <music>